Hello there. Today I wanted to show you guys a combination of coffee grinders that I recommend and really why doing this might make sense over buying a single grinder, especially when you look at future purchases or really how you define your own personal preferences in what you like in coffee. The kind of issue with this coffee stuff is that you have to try things in order to understand if you like them or not. That's the just the unfortunate reality, especially when it comes to a subjective thing like flavors and coffee grinders and what the heck the things taste like. I think what you want to do in your early journey of coffee or as soon as you can is understand your preferences. Like, what do you actually like, right? That's pretty important, especially going forward when you're figuring out how, what to buy, figuring out what things to do. When you see someone like me tell you a certain burst that tastes a certain way, uh, the only way you can actually verify that is trying it yourself and pinpointing it and defining context and figuring out like how that property of that burst set compares to what you've tried before. I think what it makes sense to you is to understand what a big conical and a big flat or really a big high clarity flat will do to the coffee. So you get basically the whole picture of what a coffee can taste like on both spectrums of big conical and big flat. I think this really makes sense for defining your own personal preferences. So that's the general reasoning there. And I wanna show you the two grinders that I've picked, it's pretty obvious here. There's the Niche Zero, which has the 63 millimeter Mazur Coney Burrs. And here is a DF64. I currently have the SSP Unimodal version ones in here, but I will recommend you use the SSP Unimodal version two or multi-purpose brew burrs. These basically are the highest performing grinders and combination of grinders that I think you can get in each category. So big conical, I can't think of a better grinder than the niche here that just gives you a very amazing presentation of what a big conical does, really makes things nice and chocolatey, great texture, all of that stuff basically a comforting cup. And then you have the SSP multi-purpose or unimodal burrs that are just clarity monsters. If you want a clear burr set, you want an experience that is the complete opposite to what this does, get a grinder that can fit 64 millimeter SSP multi-purpose burrs. I find it just to be super fun to be able to just take the same coffee and put it in each of these grinders and pull espresso, do filter, although filter on the niche is a little suspect at times. But the point here is to be able to just take one coffee and just taste it under a different burr set, like see and understand how a burr set changes the flavors and that's incredibly helpful for understanding your own preferences like maybe you want to see what a high clarity burr does to a dark roast or a high clarity burr does to a medium roast or a, a big conical does to a light roast coffee like it's very fun to actually just experiment and mess around and just be like oh that's what this is doing to the coffee and i think that's what makes this hobby incredibly fun i'll give you an example for myself where i actually have both of these set up for espresso and while i'm a light roast drinker and i do like my high clarity sometimes i just don't want to be drinking battery acid and you know 90 percent of the time i'll run the coffee through the df64 i'll get my nice high clarity espressos and then just maybe one day i'm like you know what i don't feel like it it's very feeling and, and just how am I feeling that day. I'll just run the same coffee and it's already dialed in on the niche and I get the light roast properties, but it reduces so much of the acidity and it's okay to not have that clarity. And I get an enjoyable espresso too because the burrs in this grinder are really great. So I really like that to that flexibility to just be able to, well, if I feel like I want to do something, I just do it. I get all the options and that's super fun and very convenient to have two grinders, especially considering the cost here. You're not compromising anywhere on the experience. You're not compromising on the taste. And I think that is really what you should chase because if you're interested in a topic like this, you probably don't know what you actually like. I also want to talk about something that I think is very important to think about, which is context. Well, unfortunately in this hobby, you have to try things to understand what things taste like because it's subjective. So to do it without breaking the bank, this is the combo I would recommend. But let's kind of take a step back and look at, well, what if you had a niche zero, like you were a beginner and you ran the niche zero and this was the 
clearest grinder you had ever used and you you kind of just want to upgrade and i feel like a lot of people are in the same situation where they've had the niche for a while and they're like oh well i want to go and buy a monolith i want to go buy something expensive i want to want to upgrade because that's what people call it the end game oh you know, it's, it's the fancy stuff and they buy a monolith they buy a fancy high-end 98 mil flat and they end up disliking the coffee because they may actually dislike high clarity it might make more sense to actually do this and get a real taste of what high clarity can do. You get the basic highest performing for the money in each of those categories of big conical and big flat. It will allow you to determine what properties you like and dislike of each of these types of burr sets. And then you'll be able to figure out if you want to upgrade, what is the next burr set to get? What are your personal preferences? You just get kind of both pictures here, both sides of the spectrum, and that just really helps you pinpoint what you actually like. And that for me has been the most appealing factor of this specific combo. But now let me tell you guys about why I picked the DF64 and the Niche, and then some alternatives. These two grinders, I think, touch upon so many things that everybody wants. With really great value, I want high performance, I want ease of use. Ease of use on DF64, does require a little bit of modding, I will say that, but on the conical side of things, the niche is just it's so easy. I, there is not a grinder that exists that is easier to use than the niche. You can do all brewing methods out of both of these grinders without any sort of problem. There's no issue of the motor being too weak. There's just no weirdness with running different beans. Like this, it's just the most frictionless option in both categories. You're just getting such a great experience in, in both of these categories. Uh, that I think is it's totally worth considering, especially once you do a little bit of modification to the DF64. And I just like that I can brew whatever the heck I want to use, whatever bean I want. I've had no problems with either of these grinders. And that's something you don't actually get when you spend less money or if you spend more money. So this is really that sweet spot. Let's go over the some alternatives. I'll tell you about the cheaper alternatives, then I'll tell you about the more extensive alternatives. You may see here the Lago Mini. Uh, the Lago Mini actually in Espresso is is very similar to the niche and it is a great alternative if you want to save a bit of money. The reason why I do not pick the Laga Mini in this combination is because the Laga Mini is not as easy of a grinding experience as the niche is. I have to kind of be careful about my feed rate, you know, how much, how many beans do I put in here or what roast level of beans do I have to put in there. I don't have to think about that when I'm using the niche. The niche is actually an incredibly brain dead experience to use and that's actually a great thing. So just put the beans in and it works every single time. So that's why I picked the niche. An alternative to the DS64 is going to be an ode with the SSP multipurpose burrs. You can stick the same burrs in that. The issue is that I can't grind for espresso. So that's why I pick the DS64. Now let's talk about more expensive stuff. People probably want to hear me talk about more expensive stuff because it's more fun, right? So some alternatives to these on the more expensive end, I'll talk about the flat burr options first and I'll talk about conicals. Uh, the flat burr section is uh, you want super high clarity. So the two options I'll pick on the 98 mil land are going to be any grinder that can fit the 98 millimeter high uniformity burrs. They're basically like turbocharged versions of the 64 millimeter multi-purpose burrs. It is confusing because they're not 98 mil multi-purpose or uh, unimodals. They're 98 mil high uniform, but those are basically higher clarity versions of the 64 millimeter multi-purpose. I haven't tried it myself, but another really interesting pick is going to be the Cafetec 98 millimeter Shuriken SW burrs, uh, which are supposed to be even more clarity optimized from my understanding compared to the uh, light medium burrs. And some other alternatives will also be 98 mil brew as well as 98 mil ULF. And then on the conical end, what I would recommend is something Thing that uses the 83 mil Mazers key HG1, HG2, WUG2. That burr set is basically this, but with more body. That's kind of what I've gotten when I've used that burr set. Maybe a little more clarity, but it's not going to be as clear as uh, the grinder you pair it with, which would be 98 mil HU or 98 mil SW. Any of the 98 mil flats are going to be incredibly clear anyway. So that's why you you do this for a lot less money. Uh, because it'll tell you your preferences a lot sooner than if you were to spend a lot more money for a high-end flat and you just dislike the coffee coming out of it, especially if you're somebody who drinks Dark Eros and you think the niche is a clear grinder. So, you know, 
I don't know, maybe I'm picking a bone with somebody. Do yourself a favor if you can, and it does cost a fair amount of money, but it is so much cheaper than spending a lot of money for a grinder that you may not like, or really what you are paying for is to help exponentially boost your understanding of your own coffee preferences. Figure out what properties you like and dislike in both of these grinders, in both of these burst sets, and that will really help you pinpoint if you do want to spend more money, uh, and you do want to upgrade, and you do want to explore the more expensive stuff, what is the pr proper purchasing decision there? This is why I recommend this combination of grinders is because you just get kind of the best performance in each of these categories. And ultimately it's to help build your preferences as soon as you can for, I would argue, some of the least amount of money you have to spend to actually do that. And t without compromising on your experience at all and getting really tasty coffee out of both of these grinders, you are going to get the most proper picture of what a high clarity, a big flat, and a big conical do. But that's really what I wanted to talk about today is the best combination, in my opinion, for understanding your personal preferences, as well as to get the highest performance in each of these categories. Please let me know if you want me to talk about these specific grinders individually. What I am going to be talking about are the SSP Unimodal version ones that are currently in this grinder. And that's all I wanted to show off today. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for sending the time to watch the video and I'll see you around.